Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on finding the maximum height of a projectile using a Casio Classwiz FX991EX. Let's take a look at the question. A ball modelled as a particle moving freely under gravity is launched at 5 metres per second at an angle 45 degrees above the horizontal. And in this question we've got to take gravity as being 9.8 metres per second squared. We have to find the height of the particle when it's at its maximum height and the distance from the starting point when this occurs. Let's take a look at a sketch of the situation. We have a ball which is launched at 45 degrees. It has velocity 5 meters per second. And what we're looking for is this point here. So the highest point that the ball reaches. And we're also interested in the horizontal distance away from the starting point that this highest point occurs. From the diagram, you can see that the journey of the ball is modeled as a parabola. And so we can use that to our advantage to help us find out what the maximum point would be in this case. Let's start by splitting the velocity into a horizontal and vertical component. The vertical component will be 5 times sine 45. So I'm just in calculate mode to work this out. So 5 times sine 45. That's given me 5 root 2 over 2. I'm just going to keep it as that exact answer for now. Let's work out the horizontal component. Now cosine 45 is the same as sine 45, so we should get the same result here. Five times cosine 45. Yes, that's five square root two over two as well. So I'm going to keep that in exact form for now. Let's form some equations, both horizontally and vertically, for the motion of this ball. We're going to be using the equation of motion s equals ut plus a half at squared. Let's think about the horizontal first. So our distance horizontally equals, well the u from the equation is going to be the horizontal component of velocity, which we've worked out to be 5 square root 2 over 2, multiplied by time which is still unknown, so times by t. Now thinking about horizontal, if we're modelling the ball as a particle, that means that we can ignore any air resistance so we're not going to count any air resistance in this case in which case the acceleration of the particle in the horizontal direction will be zero so when we're thinking about the part of the formula which says plus a half a t squared well the a component is going to be zero there so we're not going to have any acceleration as part of this so our horizontal equation for the distance traveled is just going to be s equals 5 root 2 over 2 t Let's think about the vertical equation. We're going to be using the same equation. So our vertical distance is going to be, well, the vertical component of the velocity. That's u sine 45, which is 5 square root 2 over 2 times t. And this time we do have acceleration in the vertical. That's going to be the acceleration due to gravity. Well, I'm going to take the up direction as being positive. So therefore, I need to think about the acceleration due to gravity acting down so it's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared now i'm just going to write this in as taking a half of that already so the half from the half at squared being a half of minus 9.8 which is going to be minus 4.9 and that's multiplied by t squared now what we're going to do here is we're going to solve for time we're going to find out the time that the particle is going to be at its highest point. So we're going to be using the vertical equation. And there's two different ways I'm going to show you how to solve this using the class whiz. The first asks us to think about rate of change. And what we know is that the gradient at the very top point, the maximum point here at the top where we're trying to find how high it is, the gradient there is going to be zero. And we know, should know that at a maximum point, the derivative should equal zero. So what we can say is that dy by dt equals zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the class whiz to solve that, to find out the value of t when the derivative equals zero. So on the class whiz, press shift and then d by dx. We can't solve this for t, so what we're going to have to do is to substitute x for t. So x in this on the calculator is going to act like our t. We're going to solve for x and that will solve for t in our equation. So d over dx, it's opened a set of brackets. Now we need to carefully input the vertical equation. So it's fraction button 5 square root 2 over 2 and then times by x. Remember x is representing our t 
and then we've got minus 4.9 and it's x squared to represent our t squared. Then you'll be prompted to input an x value. Well here, because we're solving for x, just input x in that space. So you should have x equals x and then navigate right so that you enlarge the cursor there and we want alpha equals and then zero. So what we've set up there is that the derivative of our vertical equation equals zero, which is exactly what we want to do. We want to find out what x is and therefore what t is when the derivative equals zero. That should be our maximum point. So what we need to do now is solve. So shift solve. It should prompt us for x. So basically asking us, do we want to solve x? So press equals. And here we have our x value, which is our time. So the time that the particle will be at its maximum point, 0 0.3608, let's say to four decimal places. So we've got a time there and that should store that in the memory as x. And I'm going to reference that a little bit later. So it's automatically stored now as x in the calculator's memory. Let's just confirm that by pressing shift and recall. And you can see here that the stored value of x is our time value there. I reset before doing this particular question, so that's why there's nothing else stored in any of the memories. Now we can use this stored value of x, this stored time value, to calculate the horizontal distance and the maximum height. So I'm going to start with the horizontal distance because that's the easier one. So just press AC to come out of that. And then we want to input the horizontal equation. So it's 5 square root 2 over 2. And that's times by a time, so that's times by x. 5 square root 2 over 2x press equals, we have it as an exact answer in the first instance, 125 over 98, let's press SD, and here we have a horizontal distance, 1.28 meters to two decimal places. Now let's find the vertical distance, the maximum height that we're looking for. The first part of the vertical equation is actually the same as the horizontal equation, so I'm just going to press left to go back and use that as I've already inputted it. Then it's minus 4.9 and then x squared to represent t squared and equals, and we have 125 over 196. Let's just press SD to get that as a decimal, 0 0.64 meters to two decimal places. So that's our maximum height that the ball will reach. Now I did say that there was going to be a second way that we could solve this and it's to do with the ball's path being a parabola and there are two instances where the ball's height, the vertical distance is going to be zero at the very beginning when it was at zero distance and zero time. And then what we can do is we can find out the time when it then reaches the ground again here at the very end. So to do this, we need the polynomial solver so it's menu, then equation function, and then select two for polynomial. The highest degree we have in the vertical equation is t squared. So it's going to be two for the highest degree. Now we need to input the coefficients from the vertical equation. So x squared represents t squared. So the coefficient is minus 4.9. And then the coefficient in front of x is the coefficient in front of t, which is five square root two over two. Just be careful inputting this. You might need to close brackets here. It's automatically in line mode, but you are still able to use the fraction button. And if you press equals, that's automatically given it as a decimal approximation for us. And there's no constant to add on here, no plus C. So just press equals to confirm. So this first result that we get here, 25 square root two over 49, let's just press SD, 0 0.72 seconds, remember X represents time. That's when the ball will have completed its journey and be back on the ground again, here at the very end of the parabola. Now we're just gonna press equals again to check that our second solution is zero. Remember that was at the beginning when the time equals zero, we were expecting the distance to equal zero. So press equals again, and yes, it's confirmed that at time zero, the distance is also zero. Now, because of the symmetry of the graph, the ball will be in the middle here at half the amount of time it's taken. Now, we can either take that answer from x1, uh, store it in the memory, and then divide by 2 if we wanted to. But actually, it should be the next result if we press equals again, and then press SD just to confirm. Here we have our time. What the calculator is doing is essentially plotting an x value of time against a y value of vertical distance. And so when the ball is at its maximum point, the time is going to be 0 0.3608. And remember, that's the time that we got when we solved the derivative there. 
Now, if we press equals again, because essentially the calculator is working with an X value, which is time, and a Y value, which is going to be the vertical distance, the maximum of Y should be our vertical distance. Here it is, if we press SD, then we've got the same result as we got when we worked through the equation in the first method, 0 0.64. So that's going to be our Y value, which is our distance, at the maximum point so that is what we were looking for to find the maximum height of the ball if we want to work out the horizontal distance i'm just going to scroll through them again i'm just going to take that time from the max value of x result i'm going to store that in the memory i'm going to store it in a and then you would do exactly the same as the first method we just need to input that into the horizontal equation so menu and one to go into calculate it's five square root two over two times by well a this time although we still have the same stored in x but let's use the value that we find from the polynomial solver so alpha a equals press sd and here we have our horizontal distance again 1.28 meters so there we go two methods of how we can use the calculator to find the maximum height of a ball models as a particle and then use either the derivative and solve and then equations for horizontal and vertical motion to find our maximum height and the distance from the start that that would be. Or we can use the polynomial solver because we have a symmetrical graph here and we can read off the coordinates for the maximum point, the X value representing our time, the Y value representing the maximum height, and then we can use the horizontal equation again to work out the distance. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time on the calculator guide.